Would you like to know the secret to achieving favor with God and man? Would you like to be the person who receives preferential treatment in both your business and personal life? The secret to that type of favor is embedded in the biblical principle of honor. If you'd like to learn how to walk in favor with God and man and experience that type of life, then this video is for you. Transforming your business from struggling to success and from success to significance. So what is favor and what does it mean to walk in favor with someone? To be in favor with someone means to find grace with them. The Greek word charis, which is often translated grace, is sometimes translated as favor. So to walk in favor with God and man is for God and man to bestow their favor or grace upon you. Call it head of the line privilege or preferential treatment. Call it help with whatever you need at that moment to fulfill your calling in life. How would you like both God and man giving you their unmerited favor? Of course, this doesn't mean that everyone is going to be nice to you and everything is going to go your way. You're not going to win every contract or prevent every loss or mishap. But when you walk in favor with God and man, you will experience open doors, resources, wisdom, and the divine help you need at the right time. Who wouldn't want that? The key to walking in that type of favor with God and man is through the biblical principle of honor. So let's look at what the Bible says about the importance of honor and the promises of God for those who would live a life of honor. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word for honor is kabod and refers to the weightiness or wealth, or quantity or physical weight associated with the presence and the glory of God. One of the first uses of the word kabod in the Bible is in the Ten Commandments where the Lord admonishes us to honor your father and mother that your days may be prolonged in the land that the Lord your God gives you. This is found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. In the New Testament, the Greek word time is generally used for honor and is defined as valuing a price paid or received, preciousness, honor, or esteem. Taking the Hebrew and Greek together, we see that biblical honor is about esteeming others as being significant significantly valuable in a very tangible way, like gold coins on a balance scale. This is the way God values us, and He insists that we value Him and each other in the same manner. So if you're looking for a modern day term to describe honor, it means to value someone as being very precious, like gold, even more precious than yourself. Biblical honor is the outward manifestation of our agape love towards God and man. When we honor God and man, we are demonstrating our agape love for them, the first and second commandments. True biblical honor starts and culminates in the heart and is rooted in agape love. External actions are the result of a heartfelt attitude of esteeming others more valuable than ourselves. The Lord does not credit external actions of honoring people as biblical honor if our hearts towards them are insincere towards them. The Lord weighs the motives of the heart. We see this in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 2, and Jeremiah 17, verse 10. External actions of honor will naturally follow a heart that lives a life of honor. In our Western mentality, we generally believe that people need to earn our respect and honor. But from a kingdom of heaven perspective, we are mandated to honor all people as well as the Lord the king or the ruling officials, elders, and those in authority. Many times we fail to give honor to those that is due, and yet we wonder why the Lord is not honoring us by answering our prayers. Here are three New Testament scriptures that reflect God's commandment to us to honor each other. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17, it says, Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Here we see Peter says, Honor everyone. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, it says, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourself. And finally, Romans chapter 12, verse 10 says, Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another, or giving preferential treatment to one another. Unfortunately, in our Western culture, we know more about dishonor than we do about honor. Dishonor is defined as belittling, mocking, disparaging, being disrespectful towards, or withholding something due someone else. Let me give you a perfect example of hypocritical honor, which is dishonor. You could call it phony honor. People pretending to demonstrate honor who are actually walking in dishonor. That is the State of the Union address given by the President of the United States to a joint session of Congress and the American people every year. We see the members of Congress stand and applaud. The music plays and everyone puts on a phony face. However, just before and just after, we see our governmental leaders and the media 
trash talking this very same president of the United States. Externally, they are feigning honor, but in their hearts, they are dishonoring the very same person. God is not fooled and he is not impressed with the insincerity of our hearts or our rebellion to his word. If you want to understand dishonor, look at the media. It's been said that bad news sells, but what really sells are stories about dishonor, especially those in some type of leadership position. Look at our TV shows and movies. Almost all of them are based upon dishonoring those in leadership and our fellow man. Let's take the Seinfeld TV series, for example. I love Seinfeld. I'm sure I've seen every episode more than once and enjoy their sarcastic viewpoints of everyday situations in life. But the underlying premise of Seinfeld is creating humor by mocking people in institutions, getting laughter through dishonor. In fact, many of today's comedians are extremely dishonoring to leaders in the governmental and business mountains, and everyone laughs at their jokes. I can assure you, the God of honor is not laughing. We have become so insensitive to dishonor that we need to ask the Holy Spirit to show us how and when we are doing it so that we can repent of it and start living a life of honor. That includes when we dishonor everyone, including church and governmental leaders, our customers, our employees, our competitors, our neighbors, and even our own family members. Only then can we expect to start walking in favor with God and man like Jesus did. I want to give a couple of examples of honor in the business world from my personal experiences. As I mentioned in other videos, I spent many years in the government contracting industry, which is a very competitive doggy dog world. There are no shortages of unscrupulous business people who would sell their souls in order to win some of these large government contracts. Ron was my boss for many years and was the best example of living a life of honor that I've ever met. Ron honored everyone, including our unethical competitors. I never heard Ron make a disparaging remark about anyone, not even our competitors, that stole business away from us. Ron always viewed our competitors in terms of their strengths and accomplishments and did his best to overlook their lapses of integrity. When Ron would meet our competitors at bidders conferences or trade shows, he was always friendly and respectful towards them. They in turn loved Ron and let it be known that they wanted to hire him and do business with him. Ron seemed to know how to make his enemies his friends simply by honoring them. The Lord who set a banquet before him in the presence of his enemies and give him incredible favor with them as per Psalm 23 verses 5 and 6. Another example was Deborah. Deborah was the senior vice president of a technology division of a major multi-billion dollar company. And it's the best example of someone who could lead people to excellence by incorporating honor in her management style. I know that almost sounds like an oxymoron, but let's see how she did it. Deborah would have weekly meetings with her direct reports to address IT issues that happened during the previous week, the triage activities that were performed, and what was being done to make sure these issues didn't happen again. And happen again, they almost always did. As a former project manager, I know how challenging this job can be and often doesn't get done without a lot of resistance to change, shouting, and insincere threats. The tendency for most leaders at this point is to counter each argument with some type of logical argument why something can be done and needs to be done and how to do it. Deborah would avoid these games of deflection simply by pointing out the many times that her people had done something similar or something even much greater. If Deborah's style of leadership had a tagline, it would be, you know, we are better than that. She would always end her responses to why something couldn't be done by saying, you know, we are better than that. In the end, her subordinates would leave the meeting believing that they could fix these problems because, you know, we are better than that. Deborah was the only leader I've ever met who could take you to the woodshed to bring correction in your life and have you leave the woodshed feeling better about yourself than you did before the meeting. You found yourself saying, you know, I am better than that. What about you? What examples do you have of people who truly lived the life of honor with God and man? I'd love to hear your stories. Please leave your comments below. Hopefully, this video has helped you understand the importance of honor from God's perspective. I've mentioned many times in other videos that the secret to abiding in Jesus and He abiding in you is agape love and obedience. When we abide in Him, then we are promised we can ask whatever we desire and it will be done for us. This is found in John chapter 15, verses 7 to 8. Honor is the manifestation of that agape love for God and man. Start living a life of honor and you will start walking in favor with God and man. If this video has been of some help to you, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below, and please let me know if there's any other practical kingdom principles you would like to see discussed here. 
Until then, be blessed and keep doing business his way.